Hello. So this video is for anybody looking to make um, their Ichabod Crane portfolio website. So presumably whoever told you about this should have also shared with you this web page text, Google Doc. All right, we're going to be using this time and time again to copy and paste stuff into our website so that we don't have to type everything out um, manually. All right. So assuming you have that ready, we're going to go to our Google Drive. So again, if you have a tab open, you can click on the little grid, bring up your Google Drive. Once you have your Google Drive open, you're going to go to new. You're going to go to more. And then you're going to go down to Google Sites. All right. So again, you go to your Google Drive, you click on the new button, you go to more, you go to Google Sites. All right. That's going to open up a blank web page that's now created in your Google Drive. So this is a file in your Google Drive, just like any other file that might be there. All right. Now, like most things, Google, when you first create it, it just has the name untitled site. All right. That's not very useful. It's not really going to help you find it in the future. So I would recommend going up here and changing it to your first name, your last name, and then the word portfolio. That'll make it really easy to find over the next few years. If you have to like search for it in your drive, you can just Google the word portfolio and it should be the first thing that pops up. Now, once you change that file name, you're going to notice that it adds it to your website. If you want it there, great. All right. If you like the way it looks, keep it. Um, but you also don't have to. You can just delete that out if you don't want it to show up on the page itself. All right. Where it says your page title, you're going to want to fill in your name. So first and last name. And then if you want to play with the fonts or the sizes, um, that's your call. So it can be whatever font, whatever size you want, um, whatever you like the look of. All right. But you want to have your first and last name there. All right. This header is sort of like the background image for your site. So you can go to change image, do select image, or if you have your own file, you can go to upload, but most people just go to select image and there's a bunch of pre chosen things for you. Um, if you don't like any of these, you can do a search, um, but they have to be like, free use pictures because you are making a website that could be publicly available. So you're not going to get the full range of like Google image search. But for example, you know, I'm into computers. So maybe I search for computer and I get some choices. I don't get a ton of choices, but if there's something here, I could use this as sort of my background image if that's what I wanted to do. All right. Um, let me see. Maybe I'll go with this one right here. And it'll, you know, it'll set that image for me. Now, once you've set the image, you're going to see that there's a header type, right? And you can either choose title only, which makes the image disappear. You can go with a regular banner, a large banner or cover. Um, and basically you're just changing the size. So what you choose to do there is totally up to you. Um, it's whatever you prefer. Um, and it's just the look that you want your site to have. The last thing that we're going to do with formatting before we start talking about actually adding content to our site is over on the right hand side here, you'll see there's an insert menu, a pages menu and a themes menu. All right. So I'm going to click on themes and you'll see that there are lots of themes available all right, with lots of different color choices. When you choose a theme, you're picking your theme for the entire website. All right. Most sites usually have a consistent feel. So you're picking this feel that you want for your entire site. Um, and there's some color choices. And if you don't like the colors they give you, you can kind of make your own color. Um, there's different font styles you can pick from, um, but they just give your site sort of a consistent feel. So again, take some time, click around these um, and choose the one that's of most interest to you. Okay. Once you've done that, now we can actually start adding the content to our page. All right, so this first page is going to be sort of an introductory page. So to put the content on it, we're going to go back over to this insert menu. And the insert menu lets us add all sorts of things to our site. Text box, pictures, drive files, um, table of contents, rotating images, YouTube, things like that. 
Um, and these are what you're going to use when you eventually add in your projects. Um, but for right now, we're going to go with one of these layouts. All right. We're going to use this very first layout that has a picture on the left and then a heading and some text underneath it. So when we click on this, you're going to see that it instantly adds it to our site. Now it comes in sort of like a tile. Um, and in that tile, you can choose a specific background for the tile. Um, you can duplicate it if you need to have a duplicate of it, or you can delete it. So if you made a mistake and accidentally put something in that you didn't want, um, you can click delete on that. You can also delete any of the individual items that it added. So it added, you know, these two text boxes and this empty sort of object box. But if you click on any one of those, you'll see that it has a little trash can icon so that you can get them, uh, get rid of them or, or change them if you don't want them. Um, if you wanted to add extra things to this tile, you could double click and you get a little wheel that lets you add like a drive file or another text box or another picture or upload a file um, and do it that way. If I were to click on a second layout over here, you'll see that it actually adds it as like a different tile. So this is the first layout. This is the second layout and I can delete one and not the other. So I'm actually going to delete this one right here and just focus on this. All right. So eventually when you're a senior, this is where you would put a picture of yourself, presumably your senior picture. All right. Um, for right now, you can either just leave it blank and know that that's where your senior picture is supposed to go or we can put in a placeholder image. So if I click on this plus sign, there's a choice for select image. And then this time I could be like, oh, I just want a picture of me. And I'll just use this right here. And this will be my placeholder for the time being. So eventually that's where my senior picture would go. But right now it's just sort of a placeholder picture. And when I'm ready to change it, I can just click on these three dots and replace image. All right. But that's letting me know that, okay, that's where my senior picture is going to go. Um, this right here is just the heading for this section. Um, the heading is whatever you want it to be. It could be all about me. It could be, you know, bio, it could be get to know me, um, whatever you want it to be. Um, introduction um, but the heading that that you want this section to have um, and if you don't want a heading you could even click on this box and make sure that the blue line is only around this box and delete it but that's sort of up to you and then in this lower text box this is where we're going to make use of that google doc that's been shared with you all right i'm going to click on this google doc and i'm going to highlight this introduce yourself include your name and interests section right here I'm going to right click on it and choose copy. You can also do control C, either one will work. I'm going to go back to my website and then inside this box, I'm either going to do control V or right click and choose paste. And that's just in there to let me know what has to go here eventually. So if you're watching this as a freshman, you probably don't know what you want to study when you go to college or what jobs you're applying for when you graduate from high school. So this is just kind of telling you what's going to go here eventually. Um, and then when you become a senior, you can actually fill this in with your current interests as opposed to your interests as a ninth grader. But this is just kind of letting you know what goes in this section. Okay. So this is the first page. This is the home page. This is what people are going to see when they first visit your site. All right, now let's go and start adding some of the other pages that are part of this website. All right, so I'm going to go to pages here over on my right hand side menu. And I'm going to click the plus sign. All right, that's going to create a new page. And I'm going to call this page artifacts. All right, and hit done. Now you'll notice that it creates a blank page. And then up on the top, I have like a navigation bar now so that there's going to be links on my website to get to the different pages. Now, as far as what goes on this page, this is sort of going to be like the table of contents for your portfolio. So if we go to the insert menu, we're going to start by inserting a text box. All right, it's going to be blank. We're going to go back to our Google Doc 
And we're going to highlight this next section, starting with technology standards and going down through communication and collaboration, but stopping right before lists of artifacts. I'm then going to copy this the same way I did before. I can either do control C or right click and choose copy. I'm going to go back over to my website. I'm going to right click and choose paste. And this is sort of the explanation of the portfolio. It's saying what types of concepts, what types of standards your projects are covering. So, over your four years at Ichabod, you're going to add at least eight projects. Those eight projects should cover these six categories. Um, technology operations, so using technology, digital citizenship, so proper citation, things like that, critical thinking, creativity, research, um, communication, and collaboration. So your eight projects should touch on these six topics. You know, one project might use all six of them. Another project might use only one or two of them. That's fine. As long as your eight projects sort of touch on all six of these at, at some point. At some point, all six of these are covered. All right. But this just explains to a reader, you know, what you're trying to represent in the work that you've selected. All right. Once you've done this, we're going to add a little divider line. So again, in the insert menu, if you scroll down, there's a choice for divider. We're going to click on that. The divider should go underneath. If for some reason it ended up on top, that's fine. You can click on it and drag it wherever you need to be. So that would mean me dragging it up, but I actually had it in the right spot. So I'm going to drag it down and then we're going to insert a second text box. And again, that should go right below the dividing line. All right. Now, this text box is going to be your sort of table of contents. So we're going to go back to web page text. We're going to highlight starting with list of artifacts, and we're going to go down here. We're going to control C again or copy. We're going to bring it back to our website. We're going to do control V. And now we have a list or sort of a table of contents that's going to list our eventual projects again can't fill this in yet because you haven't uploaded any projects, but when you add a project, you're going to put the name of the project here and the date that it was uploaded, name of the project, date that it was uploaded and so on and so forth. So that somebody that's visiting your site can see the whole list of projects really quickly and easily in this one location. All right. So that's it for this page. Now we're going to set up the pages that actually host the projects. All right. So to do that, we're going to go to pages. We're going to hit the plus sign again. And this first page is going to be called freshman year. All right. So I'm changing the page name to freshman year. I'm going to hit done. You're going to see that it added it to the list over here. Now we've got one extra step. We're going to make this freshman year page a sub page. All right. And the way we do that is we left click on it. We hold down the left mouse button and we drag it up onto artifacts. And when we do that and let go, you'll see that it gets indented. And now it shows up as sort of a sub menu. All right. If we look up here, there's a little down arrow. And if I hover over it, it now says freshman year. Right. So we're going to set this page up. We're going to go back to the insert menu. We're going to go back to the layouts. And we're going to use that same one that we used the first time, the one that has the picture on the left the heading and the text. All right. So the heading is just going to be the project name. All right. Whatever you choose, whatever project you choose, it's going to be the name of the project. All right. Underneath that is the little write up you're going to have to do for each project. So if we go to web page text, you will see that underneath freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, there's a few things here. All right, so I'm going to highlight tool software down to reflection. I'm going to hit control C or right click and choose copy. I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to paste it into this lower text box. All right. This is eventually what you'll be filling in when you add a project. You'll list the tools and softwares that you use to make the project, which course it was in, 
a description of the project. Now, some of your teachers have already written up descriptions, so you can click on this link and see if one of the projects you've done is already had a description written up. Um, but if there's nothing, if you can't find it in that list, you just have to write your own description of it. And then a short reflection on why you chose it. All right. Next, we've got this box here with a plus sign. That's how you're actually going to upload the project. So whenever you're ready to add a project, you'll click on that plus sign and you're either uploading a picture if it's like an art project or you're adding something from Google Drive if it's like an essay or a presentation or you're uploading some other file. All right. But when you're ready to add a project, this is where you're going to do it. And then last but not least, what you're going to do is underneath this box, underneath this box with a plus sign, you're going to double click. This little Google disk is going to pop up and you're going to choose text box. All right. And that should put a text box right underneath the plus sign. And then we're going to go back to web page text. We're going to highlight standards addressed and these six standards. And we're going to paste it into that box. Now, we just pasted all six standards in there, all right? It's possible that your project is going to address all six standards, but if it doesn't, you just delete out the ones that it doesn't apply to, all right? And this is what a project entry is going to look like. So again, when you finish a project in another class and you're happy with it, you just come back to your website, you click the plus sign, you upload it, and then you do a little bit here about the tools and software, the course, the description, the reflection, and, and stuff like that. All right, so that's how you'll make it. Um, each year has two projects. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in another one of those dividers. So we've got a little line there. And then instead of having to repeat that whole process, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here. We're going to say duplicate section. All right. Now, when you duplicate it, notice that it put it right underneath it. So I'm going to now take my divider and drag it up so that it's between the two of them there. All right. And that sets up my freshman year page. All right. It's all set up. All I have to do is eventually upload the projects, fill it in, and I'm good to go. All right. So we're now going to do the same thing for sophomore, junior, and senior. Here's the good news. All right, we don't have to go through the whole thing. If we go to our pages and we click on these three dots, there's a duplicate page. So we're going to duplicate the page. And the only thing we're going to change is instead of calling it copy of freshman year, we're going to change it to sophomore year. Click done. We're going to duplicate again. We're going to call this one junior year. Click done. We're going to duplicate again and we're going to call this one senior year. Now, the only thing that we do have to change is we change the names of the pages, but if you click on it, the sophomore page still says freshman year up here because we duplicated it. So we have to go and actually change it so that it says sophomore. The junior page still says freshman, so we actually have to change it so it says junior. And then same thing with the senior page. Just want to get that. So they all actually have the right title on them. But now you'll see on the artifacts drop down menu, we've got all four of our pages. Right now they all look the same except for the title. And eventually they're all going to have different projects on them. All right. Now that we've set up those pages, we're actually going to go back to our table of contents. So we're going to go back to that artifacts page that we just made. And down here in our table of contents, we're going to turn these into links. All right. So the way that we do that is I'm going to highlight one and two here. I'm going to click on insert link. And I'm going to link them to the freshman year page and hit apply. So now when I type in there, it'll actually be a link so that it'll take them right to the page. I'm going to do the same thing for sophomore year. I'm going to highlight them both. I'm going to click insert link. And I'm going to choose sophomore year and hit apply. Same thing for junior year, highlight them both, insert link, junior year, apply. Same thing for senior year, All right? Insert link, senior year, apply. All right? And there 
I've got all of that set up. Okay, so I've got my home page done. I've got my artifacts page done. There's two more pages um, that we're going to have as part of our portfolio. All right. One is a photos page. So we're going to go back to new page. We're going to call this one the photos page. We're going to click done. Um, and this is just where you can add photos from your time here at Ichabod. If you're involved in activities, if you're involved in, you know, spirit week or something like that, this is a good place to put some of those photos. Um, there's different layouts that have photos. You can use them if you want, or you can just add the photos one by one. All right. It might be helpful to break them up by year. All right. You don't have to, but you could break them up by year. So we could go in here and say, okay, these are my freshman year. And then maybe put a little divider in under that. And then we could say, all right, this is my sophomore year and put a divider under that. And the next one would be my junior year. And this is just one suggestion, something like the photo page, you can really make your own. There's not one requirement. Um, it's also somewhat of an optional page. Like if you get to your senior year and you're like, yeah, I just don't really have a lot of photos or I don't have anything that I want to use. Um, this is a page that you can remove from your portfolio. You're not required to have a photos page, um, but it's a nice touch. So if you've got some photos, um, I would recommend doing it. All right. If you decide that you don't want it later on and you go to the pages menu, if you click on those three dots, let me get my face out of the way, um, there is an option to delete the page. So you can get rid of it at a later time if you decide it's something that you don't want. All right. Now, the very final page is the resume page. So we're going to click the plus sign here. Now, whoops, let me get out of the way. Instead of typing in resume, we're actually going to go back to that web page text document and highlight the word resume. All right, it's just an easy way to get the accent marks in there. So we're gonna do control C, go back to our portfolio, control V, hit done. And that way we now have our resume page with the correct accents. As far as actually putting your resume on this page, you're probably going to be inserting it as a Google doc. All right, so if you've already made your resume, you can do it right now but eventually you're gonna have like a Google doc that you put here as your resume. So you can go to the insert menu, you can go to docs. Um, I'm just gonna insert the web page text we've been using to show you what it looks like, um, but it'll show up only that will be your resume. Now you can drag and make this bigger, right? If you want, but just be aware that when you actually view it on the website and if you wanna see how it looks on the website, you can click this preview button. When you actually view it on the website, um, it's going to be scrollable. So it's not like you have to make that box so big that the whole resume is showing um, because when somebody's actually on your site, they'll be able to scroll through it. So again, don't worry about it if, um, if you're looking at it and you're like, wait, I can't see the whole thing. Um, when somebody's actually on your site, they'll be able to see it. Um, the preview window, as long as we're here, you can see what it looks like on like different devices. So that's your page on a smartphone, on a tablet or a computer. And then when you're done previewing it, you can just hit the X here um, and that'll exit the preview. So that's all the resume pages. It's just adding a Google Doc where you've already like made um, your exact resume. All right. So just things to, to keep in mind there as you're working through it. Now, when you're ready to actually put this on the internet, there's just a few other things that you should be aware of. One, any Google Docs, any Google presentations, anything like that that you put on the website need to be shared publicly. Otherwise, people won't be able to see them. So, for example, I have this web page text doc that I'm putting on it. If I don't share this document publicly, people that visit my website won't actually be able to see it. They'll see like a little X that says, sorry, this document has not been shared with you. So for example, you know, here's that document. I would need to make sure that I go to file share. And then down here, mine is already set to anyone on the internet with this link can view. If it doesn't say that you might have to hit change 
and make sure that it's anyone with the link. Otherwise, if you're sending it to a college or an employer, they're not going to be able to see it. If you send it to Kinderhook, anybody at Ichabod will be able to see it, but anybody outside of Ichabod wouldn't be able to see it. So um, just be aware that any Google Docs, any Google presentation stuff that you put on, you have to share first. Otherwise, people that visit your site won't actually be able to see them. All right. The other thing to be aware of is to actually put it on the internet. You have to put this, hit this publish button. All right. So if you hit publish, it will ask you for your web address. Now, the first part of the address is set. You don't have any choice over that, but you can pick the second part. So, you know, by default, it just uses your file name, but this is, you know, my web address, Mr. Vona portfolio. And then also it says who can view my site. Again, it depends on what you're doing with it. You know, if you only want it to be to Ichabod, um, you've got to set it to Ichabod. If you want it to be anybody in the world, you have to go to public. So if you're going to send it to employers or colleges, you'd have to change that to public. So again, let me kind of walk you through that. When you hit publish, all right, you have to go who can view my site. You need to go to manage. And then down here where it says links, you got to hit change. And then you would say that the published site is viewable by the public. All right, that's lets anybody on the public view your published site. You can hit done. And then if you hit publish, it is up on the internet. Like anybody can now get to your site. Um, if you wanna take it down off the internet, you click on that down arrow and you can choose unpublish. Now, the thing to know about publishing is it's kind of like printing. And here's what I mean by that. If I go back, if I close this out, all right, so if I close this out and I go back to my Google Drive and I reopen it and I start making changes, all right? Those changes don't actually show up on the internet, all right? The changes only make it to the internet when you hit publish again. So you got to think about it like publishing is like printing out a final copy and handing it in. So you can make as many changes as you want in your Google Drive, but they only go up to the internet when you actually hit the publish button. So if I wanted to change my picture here, um, I would have to change it in my Google Drive. So let me replace the image. Um, I'll just replace it to this random image that I have here. Let's make it quick, All right? That won't change on the internet. All right, the internet will still show the old picture. It only changes on the internet when I go back and hit the publish button. So just be aware of that. If you're making changes and you're making updates, um, you can make them in Google Drive all you want, but they only make it out to the internet if you publish or print it back out to the web. So if I wanted this to be my new picture, I'd have to hit publish again. Um, it's kind of showing me the changes so that I can see what's going on and see what changes I've made. And you can see it's the different picture. So this is my draft. This is what's currently published. I'm going to hit publish. And now it has updated my picture. So anybody that visits my page will see the new forest picture instead of the old me picture. All right. But that's pretty much all you need to know. You know, if your site is not ready, if it's not finished yet, I would recommend unpublishing it. I'm going to unpublish mine right now. It doesn't need to be out on the internet. Um, but this is everything you need for your portfolio. All right. You have an intro page where you'll eventually put your senior picture and a little bio. You'll have the artifacts page that has the standards and then links to your different pages. You'll have your individual pages where you're actually uploading the projects and you have to have at least two from each year. If you want to put more, that's fine. But you have to have at least two. Um, you're going to have your photos page, which again is optional, but if you have photos, you can put them on here and divide them up however you want. Um, and you're going to have a resume page where you'll upload a Google doc that has your actual resume on it. All right. And once you've done that, your portfolio is good to go. All right. So, that's what you need to have created to be able to, you know, kind of upload and be ready to do the projects um, as they come in. All right. So if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. 
um, or your guidance counselor or whoever referred you to this video. Um, and then we'll try to get you squared away if you're still having problems with something. Okay. Um, last but not least, again, don't forget to share any Google Docs that you put on here. Otherwise, people won't be able to see them. Um, and as far as getting back to your portfolio, it is just in your Google Drive. All right. So anytime you go to your Google Drive, um, if you search for the word portfolio, it's probably going to pop right up. You know, that's why I said give it an, an easy name that's easy to remember. Okay. So I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a great day. All right. Bye.